if your game has a sky, which it probably does, uh, you probably are going to want to have some kind of cloud shadows, just for atmosphere and general feeling of having a natural world. It's actually quite easy to do, and most games are going to need some sort of version of this. So today, we're going to look at two different versions of Cloud Shadows. This one you're looking at right now is generated in world space from the top. So no matter how we change the light itself, as you can see, I have the light right here. If I change this, the shadows are not impacted. That's not entirely realistic. I like the look of this a little bit more. If you want the more realistic uh, version of this, I also have one that is projected from wherever your source light is pointing from. And if we change this one, we can see the shadows actually change depending on the position of the sun, which is quite nice. So first things first, we're going to do this uh, with a directional light. That's going to be our sun just like you would have in most of your games. And in your directional light, you're going to want to look for the light function material. I've made videos about light function materials in the past. It's more or less just a material that tells a light actor how to behave. If you want these materials uh, with this project, the project is otherwise empty. There's a link down below in the description where either Patreons or YouTube members can download the project files to play around with it. But otherwise, you can follow along as we make this from scratch. So let's call this... Um, clouds from top and open that up first things first we're going to change the material domain from surface to being a light function that disables every output other than the emissive color let's get started on making the top down version because the projected from the sun position uh, is actually the exact same setup with just a few nodes removed and a few values changed so we're going to start by adding in a texture sample, and this one we're going to go for a, a simple noise texture. Unreal comes with a Perlin noise texture. If you have your own noise textures that are maybe a little bit more pleasant to work with or to look at or whatever, you can use whatever noise texture you want. Preferably one that does a tile, though. And for now, let's just put that into the emissive color, just to have some sort of output on this thing. Now, first things first, we want to pan this texture. So we're going to add a panner so that it moves from left to right, from right to left, whatever we want. The way I like doing this is adding a vector 2 in here, and I'm going to give this a value of 1 and 0 0.2. This is just the uh, ratio of how much it's going to be moving in the x direction and the y direction, because the actual value itself then uh, we're going to get by dividing this by a certain number in my case this is going to be 500 for now and that's going to go into the speed which will make this move very very slowly but you have to understand that this texture is going to be scrolling on a full world basis so what looks very slow in this is actually going to be rather pleasant in the actual world to make this world aligned we're going to get the absolute world position and we will mask that in the uh, red and green components so we have a vector 2 out of that. So it's just being projected from the top down. Now, that's going to give us pretty unusable values for a material, especially a material that has to be so big as this. So what we're going to do is we want to divide that by a rather large number. We're going to make that a constant for now. And in my case, what I'm dividing this by is 45,000. So that's quite a large number. And let's apply that and just take a look at what we have so far. So far we have this noise texture now scrolling over our world and this looks pretty good, but we can improve this quite a bit still. The first way we improve this is by making it a little bit more animated. And what I mean by that is this is just one texture that's scrolling infinitely. And you can really tell that it's just one texture scrolling infinitely. So we want those shapes to morph a little bit. And the way we're going to do that is we'll copy over this noise texture that we have here. And we'll also copy over the panner and divider nodes. Put in the panner into the texture samples UVs. And then our ratio for the movement here, we're going to put into this division node. And this bottom division node is going to be slightly higher in value than the previous one so i set the first one to 500 i'm going to set this one to 800 so they are panning at different speeds now we're also going to change this one to be a different scale 
So this one will be moving at a different speed and also being a different scale. So they will not match whatsoever. And then the average of those two outputs is going to be the thing that we actually show. So in order to do that, what I want is this constant that I'm using here uh, for the scale. I'm going to multiply that by something in the range of 1.75. 1.5, maybe multiplying by 2. It really depends on what you personally like. And then we'll do something uh, similar to what we're doing here. So we'll take the uh, mast RG output and we will divide that by our constant, in this case multiplied by 1.75, and that will be our panel coordinate inputs. So now we have a different scale and a different speed for this bottom texture. And what we'll do is we'll add these two uh, together and then we will divide them by two. So just adding two things together and dividing them by two, that's how we get an average out of them. And that just makes the clouds feel a little bit more organic. They are a little bit changing in their shape, and that's just generally uh, going to look a little bit nicer. They're a little bit too wispy still though, uh, so the way that we can change that is by adding some cheap contrast. You do want to be careful uh, adding too much contrast here. I think the default value is uh, none, so we want to add a constant value of our own. In case you don't know how to do that, by the way, uh, you can add a constant value by just holding 1 and clicking. You can add a vector 2 by holding 2 and clicking, a vector 3, and even a vector 4 uh, in all those cases with the corresponding numbers. If we set this to a high value like 5, for instance, you will see very, very harsh lines for all of your clouds, which can be cool. That can look really good. Uh, I prefer my clouds to be a little bit more soft than this. So something like a value of 2 usually ends up working a little bit better. But it's kind of up to whatever you want to do. We also have another step that we can do, and that is remapping the gradient. Because right now, the difference between the light areas and the dark areas is quite large, but maybe we like the amount of gradient that we have with this contrast, but we just want to shift it all a little bit to one direction or the other uh, without losing any of the detail. So we can simply uh, remap this with a value of 0 to 1 is going to be the input, and then we can remap this to being a value of like 0.25 to 1. So the shadows aren't actually going to be fully shadow. And that just makes it look a little bit more subtle. And then maybe we can increase the contrast again. And this is just a lot of back and forth to see what you personally like for your project. We're going to stick with this for the time being. So this is the projected from tops uh, cloud texture. It's as easy and simple as that. So let's copy this over real quick and uh, make one uh, for a projected view. And it's going to be really easy uh, to change this one around. Because all we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the absolute world position and the masking node. We're going to decrease this value to something more reasonable, like 50. And instead of the absolute world position, what we'll do is we'll use a texture coordinate node instead. And that's going to go into both of these division the nodes. And that really is everything there is to it. So now if we uh, go into the projected version of this, uh, we can see there we are. Now we have this being projected from the position of our sun. So hopefully this has been nice and helpful for everybody watching this. A uh, very easy setup to make cloud shadows in your game. And again, if you want to have the project files with, uh, I'm probably going to uh, remove these two that we made here and just give you the two original ones that are just a little bit more fine-tuned in their values. There's a link down below in the description to the Patreon or for YouTube members to download the project files for this. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier Patreons, Sergey Thomas, 